again, my fellow Leroy Jenkins. Welcome back to my quick mission tips. I like to do mission 104 this time. I'm about to ask you to restrain yourself on this mission because I don't know about you, but have you ever played this mission with randoms online and had about 20 resets and then quit the room because you feel like it's never going to happen? Well, I'm going to help you um, show just what I like to do, how I like to do this mission, and how to make it a little safer uh, for you guys. Um, as far as, uh, also I'd like to know your guys' strategies as well, so let me know in, your, in the comments the weapons you like to take. And uh, let's get started. So um, as far as uh, weapons go, you want, well your main threats first of all, your main threats in this game are your friend Leroy Jenkins. Do not, you do not, do not want to be aggro on this mission. Um, the, the, as far as the second major threat would be the Silver King, I would say is probably the toughest enemy to deal with on this mission, at least on Inferno. Um, you also have a bunch of greens at the end, which is pretty cold-blooded. At the end you think it's over and then it's not. Um, then you have gold ants as well. And actually, as far as this mission goes, you have every boss in the game and just about every enemy type except cosmonauts and rolly balls. Everything else is in this mission. The Wasp Queens aren't too bad because you have buildings you can stand behind to kind of block yourself from the stingers, but other than that, I would say the Silver King and the Greens are the biggest threat and the Golds. Um, you do want one person to have a very accurate, fast-shooting sniper. I'm um, not fast shooting, but the projectile to be fast moving, I guess is a better way to say it. So, as far as Ranger goes, um, Ranger is very tough here, I would say, in my opinion, especially if you're soloing it. Um, as far as his choices, it, it's kind of a tough choice, honestly, for his weapons. I would say if you're the sniper, he's a very good sniper to pull enemies on this mission, so I do like the ptarmigan. Um, it's a very good sniper, or, you know, some other options down there. He has other ptarmigans and other, like the dunkel isn't bad either. But you want a, a, a weapon that has a shot speed of very high, as you can see, has a 3,000 meters per second. Um, so that'd be his sniper. And then for, for a second weapon, I like the monsoon sniper, the, the sniper, or not, sorry, the shotgun. The, the shotguns, they have a shorter range. Like this one has a 240 meter uh, range. Um, there's other lower level versions as well. Just because it's safer to fight with, with which, I'll, which I'll explain more later. But I would prefer the monsoon over the uh, slaughter, unless you're a very careful uh, fighter. Um, and then as far as uh, vehicles go, if you're soloing it, I mean, I almost feel like you need to take the auto acquisition cannon for the greens because the greens are so tough for Ranger, honestly, if you're on Inferno, especially by yourself. Um, you could also take a, uh, a fire... the um, level 56 fireball um, under grenade launchers for the greens but then you'd be sacrificing one of your weapons so I think it, you think I think you just need a, a, a nerd and you have to be very careful at the end to pull just enough enemies to where the greens come out and you have time to get into the air with the helicopter if you're not alone and you're not sniping then you could swap you could swap out probably one of your weapons probably this you could probably swap out the sniper for a uh, healing bomb for your team um, you could also maybe swap out the nerd for a brute to snipe out the queens and the bosses, but you have to be very careful because the brute shoots through targets. You don't want to pull more enemies, but that's a possibility as well. Now, as far as Wing Diver goes, um, I like the Ryzen, of course, if you're sniping because it's pretty fast projectile and um, you can pretty much one or two shot a boss, which is very important as well. If you don't have enough range and you probably want to take a, a monster sniper, it's a very quick shooting projectile as well, and it's okay sniper. Um, and then the second weapon, I like to have something that can reach the wasps, of course, so you probably want a lance. I like the power lance better because it has less damage fall off and less energy than the triple lance. But the triple lance is also fine, any of the lances. Um, and then, let's see, as far as core goes, I don't think you need anything special. I don't think you need the jet core, honestly. I think uh, a core that gives you more energy is probably better, so I'd probably take the 88, honestly, personally. Um, and then Air Raider. Air Raider, I like the Tempest because you can take out one boss with the missile, um, as long as you're careful, as far as when you attack it. Um, and then I like the, uh, the turret guns to protect yourself nearby. And then, um, if if you aren't the one sniping the enemies, then I would take a 150 personally. I like the 150 for fighting single targets. It's pretty strong and also is good on you know like golds or silvers or something. If you are the one that has to snipe, then you could swap that out for a limpet sniper because it shoots very fast and you can pull enemies with the limpet sniper as well. It's decent it's decent damage too. And then vehicles, I like the red Nyx because it's fast and you kind of it's kind of helpful um, to have a fast a fast uh, Nyx on this mission. Um, and then as Fencer goes, I like personally the Jackhammer and Dispersion Mortar. Um, the Jackhammer is for close range enemies, of course. Dispersion Mortar is for bosses. Um, that's why I like the Dispersion over the Shotgun. And then for the second we weapon setup, I would take a Finest Hammer for the Greens. Very good on the Greens. And also very good on um, Ants as well in general and Spiders. 
and then I would take if you if you have to pull, I would recommend taking the Galleon Armor Piercer. Um, this is the one good use this weapon has. It has a 600 meter range, which is enough to pull enemies with, and it's a very quick shot speed, 1500 meters per second. So I per personally like that over the NC Cannon because at least you can dash hop around with this weapon setup, and you can still use it as a second uh, fighting setup. Um, but, I mean, if you're looking for um, something to pull pretty much a sniper rifle, you want something to probably at least around 1,000 meter per second. It just makes it a lot easier. Now, as far as weapons not to take, I, I do, I do want to mention that in this mission, because this mission is notorious for ending badly if you take the wrong weapons. So, I would recommend not taking any missiles of any kind, honestly. Um, even the fork missile launcher for ranger is very bad here, because if you hit certain enemy types, such as tadpoles or wasps, the first, the first missile is going to hit the, the tadpole, it's going to knock it into the air, then the other missiles that are following it are going to hit the, the tadpole way in the back of the map, and then it's going to pull the rest of the map. So I would just stay away from the fork in general on this map. Um, also, uh, you would want, probably want to avoid the Stardust Cannon for Wing Diver. It has just too much range unless you're very careful. Thunder Crossbow is dangerous as well. Any Bolt Shooter Sniper Rifles bounce, so you don't want to take those. Those are very dangerous to pull with. The Mirage, of course, is dangerous. The Geist, oh my goodness, please don't take the Geist on this mission. <laughs> um, the Phobos or the KM-6, I would say stay away from them unless you're very good at aiming them very carefully because you don't want to pull the rest of the map. Um, the Firecracker also is kind of weird in that you, you, even if you aim down towards the ground, it feels like the Firecracker, the very top uh, the very top Firecracker shot will still go way out in the distance. So it's very dangerous to take. I would recommend not taking that. Even like the Slaughter Shotgun or a Machine Guns that have like a 500 plus meter range, they're very dangerous because it, the shotgun, for example, this thing, even with a 340 meter range, I don't feel comfortable unless you're fighting in the back because it shoots through targets. So it's going to hit everything in front of you, which means you could be pulling more of the enemies in the back. So you'd be very careful with that. Any machine gun, of course. I've always hesitated to use a machine gun because, like, for example, some of these good machine guns have, like, a 450 meter range. That is so easy to pull more enemies than what you want. So um, stay away from that. And then, of course, Air Raider, I would also recommend staying away from any beacons, uh, any of these gunships that stick to targets and follow them, like the 105 or the Vulcan cannons. Because, um, like I said, if... if if the enemy, like a the wasp or something, or even an ant, walks further backward, that Vulcan cannon is following that target and it can pull more enemies that are further back, which you do not want. So I would stay away from those, honestly. I think that's pretty much everything um, as far as weapons to stay away from. But let's go ahead and get started and show how the mission goes and how I like to pull this mission personally. All right, before we get started, something really quick important I want to mention is if you do have like an air raider with the, the stationary turrets, I'd recommend keeping your turrets back here probably rather than up front there because if you have them up front there 400 meters they can reach uh, pretty pretty far up there which is a bad idea so I'd recommend putting them further back by these buildings if you're gonna do the turrets same with like if you take Gleifner for a wing diver or anything homing like that which I, don't, I wouldn't recommend honestly but um, if you do I'd recommend staying staying back here by the buildings all right, we're in the mission now. So there are some NPCs here at the beginning. So if you have someone that's uh, in front, or that's going to be in the back rather, that's going to fight in the back, I'd recommend waiting until they're done talking and grabbing them and taking them in the back and kind of keeping them more safe. But uh, you're going to want to fight in this area right here. You're going to wait. If you pull any enemies, you want to fight right here where the NPCs are at. You don't want to fight up front because they'll pull more enemies. So the first thing I like to do is just pull, hit a small ant over here right here on the right side and that'll pull this queen with it. You don't want to pull the queen but just pull a small ant. Of course make sure there's no other thing next to it when you're pulling but uh, most of the time it's pretty safe to pull that. And then of course wait till they come back here to the NPCs before you fight because if you fight up front there's definitely a threat of pulling more enemies which you don't want to do. And of course as always I'm playing this offline with limits off because I want to do this quickly to make the video quick but I have done this many times online and Inferno so it does work. Alright now the next thing I like to do, next thing I like to pull is the uh, is the uh, Queen Wasp, just to get her out of the way to make sure you're fine. So you want to wait, of course, she'll, till she's uh, in a good position, circling around the front more. So um, it's a little dangerous to attack these small wasps unless they're very, very close to you, like one right there. But um, I would recommend maybe not fighting those wasps, not pulling those wasps unless they're really close. So don't wait till this queen gets to a good position. And then I'll pull her. 
Okay, she's pretty close now. I think I'm going to pull her now. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. You want to wait until she's very high in the air and also very near to you. You don't want to have her on the on the billion like that. You don't want to have her, you know, in the back there anywhere at all like that. So definitely want to wait on this one. Okay, here she comes. She's very high in the air, and I'm going to wait till she gets a little closer to the front. There we go. I'm going to do that now. But you definitely want to wait. I mean, unfortunately, it took longer than it usually does to do that. But you want to wait till she's very high in the air and not near any other bosses. And like I said, you can always um, fight behind the buildings and use the buildings to help protect you from the from the queen wasp while you take out these little ones. Wouldn't be a bad idea. And also, if you have two people, you can always have one person stay by the building and have the queen shoot at them, and then have the person further back in the map sniping the queen is a very safe way to do it as well. All right, the next thing I like to pull is the the brown spiders on the right side, the brown spider king. So what I like to do is, um, of course, just snipe an enemy on the far, far right side of the map. And if the king comes, the king comes. If he doesn't, then you can take out some of these small brown spiders first. And then you can fight um, the king, pull the king next later. But it may pull some wasps with you too, which is nice to get rid of some of those. But I would recommend doing that first. Alright, so I didn't pull the king by pulling that small brown spider. So I'm just going to go ahead and shoot another enemy on the far right side of the map. And then pull the king with it. So I'll pull this ant here, I think. And that'll definitely pull the king. And then you just want to fight the king. Of course, you can always, like I said, use these buildings for help if you need to, to get the king um, near you. But this might pull some some uh, golds. You want to be careful with that. But, uh, but that would be the next pull I'd recommend. And wait, of course, until he gets closer to you before you fight him. Because you don't want to pull in more enemies. Alright, the next thing I like to pull is this queen ant on the front. So all I like to do is um, wait till there's a good spot where you see an enemy like this one right here away from the pack that'll also pull the queen but not pull anything extra and just try and pull that queen by itself you do have to be careful though some of these pulls might get you a uh, purple uh, purple tadpole so you definitely want to be careful of that but uh, and then always as always pull them back to the buildings before you fight them all right, that went pretty smoothly. Sometimes you have to wait a while before the, the enemy gets into the right position, but it's definitely worth it because you don't want to restart this mission halfway through. So it's definitely always good to have one puller. The next thing I like to pull is this red wasp queen. You want to wait until she's very at the very top of that building when you do pull her. So I may wait a little bit longer until she's a little higher up, but I like to pull her when she's high up, like this right here. And that, that will definitely get you some extra tadpoles and some more wasps, but um, like I said, use your buildings to help out a little bit. And like I said, make sure she's very at the very top of that building, because if you, she's not, then you may get the Archelaus behind, which you do not want to fight him with this one, because he'll tear, tear up all your buildings and, and distract you, so. Alright, sometimes you will get one of these uh, cosmo or uh, colonists come after you, so if you do, just want to wait till he gets very close to you before you attack him. You don't want to attack him way out there. But I was able to pull that queen by itself. And now, um, the next thing you want to do is just pull these enemies on the far right side of the map, like these wasps here. So as they come around the side of the building, just pull a few and see what comes with it. And just keep doing that, just attacking the very far right side of the map. And just pick off enemies here and there. And you'll be able to clear out some of these small enemies next. Alright, now I'm just going to keep picking off the farthest right enemy as far as I can and not shoot anything past the left side of this building until Archelaus comes after us and then we fight him next. So just all these small enemies on the right side, you can just keep picking them off. Um, and uh, if there's an enemy up on, on the building, you can always hit him up here or just a little bit in the front here, but you just, just want to try and stay around this building or to the right side of it and just pull the rest of the enemies until you get him to come after you. That's usually what I like to do next. All right, I pretty much cleared out all the enemies on the right side of this building or near in front of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to snipe um, Archelaus's head in the back here. And since he didn't come with another enemy, so just go ahead and pull him and just pull him only. And then fight him next. All right, so all we have left are the Silver King Spider and the uh, Grey Ant Queen. So what I would recommend doing is I would recommend trying to grab the uh, Silver King Spider at a good time. Because you want to have the least amount of points, you want to remove the most amount of points from the map so that the green phase will spawn next. 
Because once you kill one of these bosses and enough of these small enemies, the greens are going to come out of this tall building here. And you want to be, you want to have the few amount of enemies as possible that see you when the greens they come, so you only can deal with the greens by themselves. So I'm going to wait for a good time when the pole is king, which looks like right about now. Go ahead. Looks like I, did I hit him? Yeah, I did hit him. Okay, so just pull the Silver King by here, and then this is probably the toughest pull, but um, you can always use the buildings if you need to, to um, kind of kill all the small enemies first, and then kill the King next, but uh, that's what I'd recommend doing uh, next, for the next pull. Alright, now that the Silver King is out, and a few, some of the small Silvers are dead, um, what you want to do is you want to try and pull one or two small enemies at a time, and not pull that Queen Ant. That way, you, like I said, you'd be ready for when the, um, the Greens come out. So I'm going to start pulling on one enemy at a time, you, uh, this is kind of annoying, taking it a little bit slow here at the end, but you definitely don't want to die here at the very end, so I'm going to try and shoot, uh, let's see, another enemy that would be safe far away from that queen. So I'll pull this uh, silver, I think, over here. Pull a few of these, and this should pull the green phase um, for these enemies right here. Alright, perfect. So now I just have one or two enemies that see me, and then all these greens come out of this building. So I'd recommend um, going through some of these buildings here to slow down the greens if you don't feel comfortable with it. But if you pull them through these buildings, it'd be, it'd be a lot easier to deal with them, honestly. Especially as a ranger. But yeah, there's easily about a hundred of them, it seems like, on this on this uh, mission here. So I'd recommend, like I said, as, as you can see, I'm down here at, at the... Uh, the left corner of the map with all these buildings and they have a very tough time getting through so this is probably the safest way to do this part with here at the greens and plus since no no bosses see you it makes it a lot easier um, because you're because you took it very slow at the very end there and also if you're a ranger with the helicopter I'd recommend having your helicopter in this corner with all the buildings um, so that you'd be ready to go up into the helicopter and have time to get up in there and then that way you can take your helicopter out to an open field and then stay, you know, stay the maximum range, which is, I think is 480 meters with the auto acquisition cannon, so they can't really hit you. And uh, I would still move a little bit, because the, the ants will chase you, but then just keep moving and shooting the auto acquisition cannon and killing most of them. And then once you're out of ammo for the auto acquisition cannon, then you can just fly back over to the other side of the map, buy some buildings, jump out, and then fight the rest of them as a ranger. That'd probably be the safest way to do it as a ranger. Even if you have two rangers, that would still be, you know because having a fast class definitely helps with these enemies. Air Raider doesn't do too bad here because he has the Nyx and he also has his turrets. So one set of Zexar guns, I would probably put him out in the middle of the field and uh, get in your Nyx and you should be fine with that as far as the Air Raider goes. But this is definitely the hardest, one of the hardest parts of this mission. Except for maybe the Silver King may be a little harder. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There, all that's left is just the uh, the Grey Ant Queen. If you got this far, you definitely can pull the last Grey Ant Queen with a few enemies, and then that's it. So, um, hope this was helpful to you. Um, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps more people find the channel. And as always, remember, EDF doesn't leave a man behind ever. And if you're interested in ways to help support the channel financially, there's the join button next to the subscribe button. There's three different tiers: uh, five dollar, two dollar, one dollar. Or watching a few ads helps financially as well. It's very much appreciated. Hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot.